so what was your experience on Django and, and how did you end up in that situation on that one? Oh man, I'm not even sure how much you can say or not say. I, I auditioned a bunch of times for the lead in Django. Um, I was a complete unknown. Um, the part that Kerry Washington eventually did brilliantly. Um, I was completely unknown. I'd never even, I don't, I never really done a movie, like, like not a big budget film at all. You know, I did this taped audition in New York and then the next thing they were flying me just to meet Quentin Tarantino in LA and then he flew me to Louisiana and then, um, oh wait, maybe it was the other way around. Anyway, it, he flew me places where I met with him um, and auditioned with just him and his casting, uh, Vicky Thomas, his casting director, who's wonderful. Um, and then I didn't get the part, which I, I weirdly, I was so excited to be auditioning for Quentin Tarantino. I was just like, whatever, like, you know, I can't believe I got as far as I got being someone who was completely unknown and w w all of those things. And then um, I had read the script. The script was, I'm not joking. It was this thick. I remember specifically this giant script. And I re the part I eventually shot was not in this giant script. I almost feel like, and this is just me, thinking that Quentin, Tar Tar Quentin Tarantino cares about me this much. I feel like he wrote me a part <laughs> after like flying me all over the place because this thing didn't exist, right? And then suddenly they send me this, this um, it's one what, what of the slaves, she's in the big house and she has this interaction with Christoph Waltz and Samuel L. Jackson. It's like, you know, the, the, the big names. She has this very sort of funny interaction coming up the steps. I did it. I went to it, flew again to New Orleans, um, shot it. Uh, with with Sam and, and Christoph Waltz and on this wonderful, insane set. I even ran into Carrie. I kind of knew Carrie from before, but like I even ran into her. We had a big chat and it was just so wonderful to like be in this thing. I eventually got cut. I understand actually why I got cut because I think the scene that happens right before my scene, my, my scene was repetitive. For in terms of the dynamics, what they were showing about the slaves, it, because my scene was all with, it was um, Sam Jackson basically yelling at me, but he had kind of just done that outside with Carrie. And I do feel like, oh, okay. I think I would have cut my scene too. It's repetitive. We just saw him doing the same humiliating, yelling at, you know, uh, mocking a woman outside. And then he comes in and he kind of does the same thing to me. So that's what happened. This is the second. I, think I had a name too, but I don't even remember what my slave name was. This is the second conversation I've had with someone who got cut out of a big movie, and I just have so much respect for the way that you both look at it and just how you can understand the big picture and not just thinking of yourselves. Because, like, I'm very sensitive about my work, and I feel like I probably wouldn't have handled it that well. Okay, so here's the thing. This was eight years ago, maybe. I don't know if I handled it extremely well when I found that. I've had some time to reflect, to be mature about it. That's when fair. I found out, I was devastated. And I think at that point, my husband, and now we do not do it. My husband, I told everybody I was in Django Unchained. And then they go to the movie theater and I am not in Django Unchained. So I don't do that anymore. I'm like, do not say a word until I see the final cut of this thing and know for sure. That is understandable. So it, taught me, it taught me a good lesson, but yeah, I, I don't know that I was super mature to begin with. 